Today, we want to apply trig functions to non-acute angles. This is why we invented this standard position, so we can all do this in a very organized fashion. Remember, a standard position has zero degrees on the positive x-axis and says counterclockwise rotation is pos the positive direction. So this is how we define standard position. That's positive, and so this way is negative. What we have discovered so far is that every term, we could terminate between zero and 360, but we would also keep going around. So we wanna focus on between zero and 360. If we learn that, then we learn all the rest. We learn before zero, we learn after 360. Just for some locations that up here is gonna be 90 degrees. Down here will be 180 degrees. Here's 270 degrees. And here's 360 degrees. If we learn what's going on from zero all the way out to 360, we know everywhere else. So there's just gonna be a copy. 360 to 720 is just a copy of zero to 360. Negative 360 up to zero is just a copy of zero to 360. Zero back to negative 360 is just a copy of 360 back to zero. The idea is that we want to, when we look at an angle that terminates in one of the quadrants other than the first quadrant, we want to identify the reference angle. So if we have an angle in the second quadrant, so if an angle terminates in the second quadrant, so if this is a theta, that terminates in the second quadrant, the reference angle finishes going to 180. There's theta sub r, the reference angle. The reason that we like this reference angle business is number one, Reference angles will always be acute angles. So the reference angle, theta r, is the reference angle. The reference angle goes from the terminal side to the nearest part of the x-axis. The quadrants two and three go towards the um, Negative x-axis in quadrants one and four will go towards the positive x-axis. So if I had a theta here in the third quadrant, there's our reference angle. If we have a reference angle in the fourth quadrant, or sorry, if we have an angle in the fourth quadrant, I need to give myself another page. We just keep going. There's our reference angle. Your reference angle always goes from the terminal side to the nearest part of the x-axis. Your reference angle should go from the terminal side to the nearest side of the x-axis, positive or negative. Here's why we care about reference angle. The reference angle will always be an acute angle. The reference angle is always an acute angle and so therefore will fit in a right triangle.
Moreover, this is going to give us values of our trig functions if our angles are not acute. So if we apply a trig function, we want a trig the trig function of an angle. This will be the same as that same trig function of the reference angle or different than that only in sign. So this will be plus or minus the trig function of the reference angle. The tri a trig function of an angle will be plus or minus the trig function of the reference angle. The plus or minus will depend on a combination of which trig function we're using and the quadrant in which it term the angle terminates. So the plus or minus I actually want to list the tree function first. The plus or minus de depends on the trig function in question. And the quadrants. Plus or minus will depend on the trig function and the quadrants. This is why we care about these reference angles because we want to apply our trig functions to angles that are not acute. I can apply trig functions to all of our Questions? Is everybody okay? It looks very sad. I mean, all like 49 is sad. That looks sad. Ooh, I just gave it away. 49 is lost. Okay, let's do it. Question. Yes. Okay. Certain trig functions are positive or negative in certain quadrants. Trig functions are positive or negative depending on the quadrant in which they sit. Uh, I'm just going to write down, we're just going to write down what that is. In the first quadrant, all are positive. All trig functions are positive in the first quadrant. In the second quadrant, sine is positive. In the third quadrant, tangent is positive. And in the fourth quadrant, let's put there. Cosine is positive. If it's not positive, it's negative. This is a diagram of what I call what's positive where? Which trig functions are positive in which quadrants? Sine is positive in quadrants one and two. So sine is positive in the top half 
cosine is positive in quadrants one and four. Cosine is positive in the right half. Another way to remember this, sine is positive where y is positive. So also in the category of what's positive where. Sine is positive where y is positive. Y coordinates are positive in quadrants one and two, the top half. Cosine is positive. Where X is positive. Cosine is positive where X is positive. That's why it's quadrants one and four. That's where X is positive. It's quadrant one and quadrant four, uh, quadrant one and quadrant four. Tangent is positive when X and Y match in sign. That is X and Y are both positive or X and Y are both negative. So that's gonna be quadrants uh, one and three. In quadrant one, X and Y are both positive, so tangent is positive. In quadrant three, X, three, X and Y are both negative, so tangent is positive. Each trig function is gonna be positive in two quadrants, and negative in the other two. If we want to visualize this, sine is positive in quadrants one and two. So sine is positive where y is positive. So that's up here. Cosine is positive in one and four. So cosine is positive where X is positive. That's over here. Tangent is positive where X and Y have the same signs. That's quadrants one and quadrant three. So that's up here and down here. I'm not sure how each of you remember things. So I wanna give you a lot of different ways of remembering. Sine is positive where Y is positive. Sine is positive in quadrants one and two. Cosine is positive where X is positive. Cosine is positive in quadrants one and four. Tangent is positive when X and Y have the same sign. Tangent is positive in quadrants one and quadrants three. Here's a visual representation of those three descriptions. Also, if you count around the quadrants, quadrants one, two, three, and four, it's A, S, T, and C. A, S, T, and C. So all students take calculus. Tough thing to say in a trig class. Well, no, that's too far away. But it's true. All students take calculus. So that's another way we can remember what's positive where. All Students take confidence. I don't know which way you're going to remember what's positive where, but here is a variety of ways to remember what's positive. What we need to be able to do is given an angle between zero and 360, figure out the quadrant and the reference angle. So 
So if we have a 240 degree angle, we have a 240 degree angle, what quadrants does 240 degrees terminate in, in standard position? Third quadrants. And what is the reference angle? Sixty. So, uh, what is the uh, what are the sine, cosine, and tangent of a sixty degree angle? Let's just get the approximations. So, sixty. The sine of sixty is. I'm in radians. Negative, uh, sorry, 60 is uh, square root of three over two. If you're not familiar with that, we could do sine of 60. Sine of 60, our reference angle is 0 0.8660. 0. Cosine of 60, I'm just looking at the reference angle. Point five and tangent of sixty This is in quadrant three. So tangent should be positive. Tangent of 240 should be positive. Cosine of 240 should be negative, And sine of 240 should be negative. So if we calculate the sine of 240, we get negative 0.8660. Not surprising, the value will be the same as the sine of the reference angle, but since we're in the third quadrant, sine is negative. Two forty is in the third quadrant, so the cosine of two forty will be negative. The value of cosine of 240 will be the same as the value of cosine of 60, the reference angle. Tangent of 240 will be the same as tangent of 60 because 240 is in the third quadrant, tangent is positive in the third quadrant. Any questions? Comments? Slide over. Too simple? Too easy? How's everybody okay? Everybody looks stunned. Where are today? You all look like this. Yes. That's correct. In problem two, it said find sine, cosine, and tangent. So you're deciding uh, the sine based on the quadrants. You get the value from the reference angle. You get the sine from the quadrant. So, uh, Here's what we want to do. We want to make sure that we have all these reference angle values. We can figure out the reference angle, figure out quadrants, and we want to check that our answers are okay. And we're going to check with each other. So grab your reference angles. Wow. 
All right, please break into teams. Make sure you know your reference angles and you can go both directions. Give it an angle, find the reference angle in quadrants. Give it a reference angle in quadrant, figure out the angle between zero and 360. So on the reference angles handouts, uh, we started off in the first direction is I give you an angle in standard position and you tell me the reference angle and the quadrant. So in the first four, it was just 50, 53 degrees in the four quadrants, first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, fourth quadrant. The main thing that we want to go for is that the reference angle always goes from the x-axis, either positive side of the x-axis or the negative side of the x-axis. Uh, last week, we wrote down some formulas that only applied if theta was between 0 and 360. So what's more important is that we get an idea of what quadrant we're in and where we need to go, how far we are from the x-axis. So in the first four, we could have used those formulas. Here's those 53 degree reference angles, always going to the x-axis. In the first quadrant, positive x-axis. Second quadrant, negative x-axis. Third quadrant, negative x-axis. Fourth quadrant, positive x-axis. Just go towards the nearest x-axis. In the second set of problems, I threw in some uh, angles with a negative measure. So E and F are 201 degrees and negative 201 degrees. So 201, we go counterclockwise, 201 and 201 degrees and end up in the third quadrant. And we are 21 degrees past 180. So our reference angle is 21. Going the other way, going the other way, we still go 21 degrees past negative 180. And so our reference angle is 21 degrees. Reference angle should always be positive and acute. Also notice that reference angles always go towards the x-axis, never the y-axis, always the x-axis. Uh, G and H, same kind of thing. Uh, one, uh, 120 in the second quadrant has a 60 degree reference angle. And negative 307 is going to be in the first quadrant, and there are 53 degrees to go to get to the negative 360s. 53 degree reference angle. Any questions? How's everybody okay? Everybody looks stunned. It's, it's week five, so it's starting to set in just how long the semester is and how long two hours can be every single Tuesday and Thursday afternoon for 17 weeks. Don't worry, there's only 12 more weeks to go. And, oh, that's only 24 classes. Oh, but wait, there's also spring break. So it's not 24 classes away, it's 26. So just two weeks will have to show up. That's a long way, that's May. It's the end of May. So I didn't do the sine and cosine and tangent for these, uh, mostly because um, I don't think of it as laziness. I think of it as uh, efficiency. So, I mean, metabolically, it's more efficient to just kind of avoid work. Anytime someone accuses you of being lazy to say, no, 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 I evolved to conserve energy I'm listening to the evolutionary process. All right. So um, this is just a matter of taking the reference angle and putting it in the appropriate quadrant. Uh, in quadrant one, the reference angle and the angle always just the same if we have an uh, angle in standard position. If we want to draw it, always remember that the reference angle, I didn't give you a little coordinate systems, uh, 30 degrees in quadrant two will be, here's quadrant two, and the reference angle of 30 degrees goes in there. That leaves 150 degrees left over. So that would be if you want to visualize the reference angle and how you can figure out the angle theta. In quadrant three, we can draw a 60 degree reference angle. So if I draw an angle here, this is 60. 
and we can figure out how much we have to do to get there. We have to go 180 plus 60. You can either remember it as formulas, which is not very good, or you can visualize what's going on. There's 180, and then we have to go 60 more to get to that third quadrant angle. If I draw 15 degrees in quadrant four, that's gonna be a little bit down here. That's the 15 degrees. So if I go all the way around, I've used up 15. So 360 minus 15 is the 345. Any questions? There are other ways we could describe these angles because every terminal side has an infinite number of descriptions. Uh, e, F, G, and H are the same things, quadrant one, two, three, and four. You're either adding 180, subtracting from 180, or subtracting from 360. And I would end up drawing the same pictures because there's not a lot of visual difference at this scale between 32 degrees and 32.1 degrees. So, how's everybody okay? Everybody 16 for 16? I'll do we are now. Next thing, last thing. Uh, we want to look at the iconic triangles. This is this actually does relate. It doesn't seem related at first, but it does relate. We're going to learn uh, these two iconic triangles, the 45, 45, 90 triangle and the 30, 60, 90 triangle. An isosceles right triangle and 30, 60, 90. which is half an equilateral triangle. What we want to do is learn the ratio of the sides in each of these triangles, because this will give us sine, cosine, we'll learn the trig function, sine, cosine, and tangent of 30, 45, and 60 degrees. Once we learn sine, cosine, and tangent of 30, 45, and 60, we're going to take those 30, 45, and 60 and put them in all four quadrants. So let's draw a picture of each of these triangles because we want to learn the rate the ratio of the sides. So here is an isosceles right triangle, or a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. If the two angles in this triangle are the same, then the sides opposite those angles must also be the same. So if I say this side, this side is length one, then this side is also length one. Sides opposite equal angles are also equal. We can use Pythagorean theorem to find the, the length of a hypotenuse and the square root of one squared plus one squared is the square root of two. The other place this is relevant is, or not, I don't know if relevant is the right word. This is also the length of the diagonal of a square. This the diagonal of a square will be square root of two times the length of a side. This is interesting because the square root of two is an irrational number. That means if you take a bunch of squares and line them up one way, a bunch of squares, line them up, and then you cut the, the squares along the diagonal and try to line those up, they will never line up. This corner will never line up with where two of the squares meet. Because we'd have to look for a common multiple between the one and the square root of two, but the square root of two is irrational. There is no ratio that will make that work. It will never match up. You'd have to have an infinitely long bathroom to make that tile pattern work. Another fun fact about the square root of two. The ancient Greeks did not know about irrational numbers like we do today. Those stupid fools. 
They did not know about ra irrational numbers. They thought that all numbers were rational. They didn't know how to express the square root of two as the ratio of numbers. They couldn't make a fraction out of it. They didn't know how to make a fraction out of it. But that just means they're like, oh, we just don't know what it is yet. But it's got to be the ratio of two integers. We just got to figure out what it is. The problem was their whole philosophy was based on this. Like, all numbers are rational. Pi is rational. Square root of two is rational. It's just, we got to figure out what the ratio is. And then some dude comes along and is like, well, actually, like, well, um, actually, the square root of two is not rational. And then he makes a literally fatal mistake. He's like, well, let me prove it to you. And then he proves that the square root of two is irrational. And Pythagoras is like, oh, dude, that's fascinating. Tell me more about that. No, 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 hang on. Let's take a boat ride where you tell me more about that. And then they rode out onto the Mediterranean. It's like, oh, go ahead and tell me more about the square root of two being irrational. And he's like, oh, well, the thing is, hang on, where is everybody? He's like, well, I don't know. Hey, is that a fish down there? And then <laughs> threw him over the edge. I don't know if they shot him. I don't think he had a, I don't think he had a gun. We never found one. I don't know if it was Pythagoras himself that did it. But they apparently whacked this dude because it's like all, no, not all numbers are rational. Here, here's a proof. I don't know if that story is true, but imagining ancient Greeks, Pythagorean cult being like the mob, but with math. I'm going to make that movie, I think. Anyway, the square root of two is irrational. It's not the ratio of integers. We know that now. No one else has to be hurt. But this will allow us to calculate the sine, cosine, and tangent of a 45 degree angle. So the sine of 45 degrees is opposites over hypotenuse. The cosine of 45 degrees is adjacent over hypotenuse. That's the cool thing about 45 degrees. It's just, um, you get the same sine cosine. This is not a common way to write one divided by the square root of two. Some of you may have been told why this is the case. Why can't, why don't I write it one over the square root of two? Does anybody know? You might remember. Yes. Yeah, we don't want radicals in the denominator. We don't want irrational numbers in the denominator. In an age of calculators, it's not that big of a deal anymore. But because we're humans, a lot of times we, we don't leave things as one over the square root of two. So we have to rationalize our denominator. And we multiply by, anyone know what we do? Uh, where do we multiply by square root of two? on both the top and the bottom. Because we can't multiply by anything, it changes the value. But if we multiply by one, nothing happens. So we're gonna do our favorite trick. We're gonna multiply by one. What's the square root of two times one? Square root of two. What's the square root of two times the square root of two? Two. Square root of two times square root of two is the square root of four. Square root of four is two. Now we don't have an irrational in the denominator. In this context, instead of saying all of square root of two over two, we'll just be cool and say root two over two. And everybody knows that we're talking about square roots. So if you're like, all oh, cosine of 45 is root two over two. And the person you talk to is like, oh, is that a square root or a cube root? Just be like, oh, if you know, you know. I'm just kidding, that's me. It's probably like a square root. And then teach them how to be cool. Tangent of 45 degrees will be opposite over adjacent which we'll just write as one.
Any questions? How's everybody good? The other triangle that we want to be familiar with is an equilateral triangle, but then we're going to cut it in half to make a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. I, I, I'm like sitting here trying to figure out in my head. I'm like, I literally have like a ruler in my hand. Like, but it's all messed up. He's like, oh, let's do this. No, then I can't find the middle. What's that? Uh, one, two, three, four point eight. This is how I keep my view count low on YouTube. I make riveting content where I'm drawing a fucking triangle. And I make sure to do it real slow. Uh. Then they realized I was already, they already put it at two times speed. Well, how slow were you going? Like, oh, it's going real slow. When we have an equilateral triangle, all the sides are the same, right? So I'm going to actually make this a two, and this side is a two, and this side is a two. But then we're going to, and all the angles are the same. So this is going to be a 60 degree angle. But then we're going to split this in half. That's going to give us a right angle here. That's going to give us this side is just a one in the half a triangle. And that's going to put a 30 degree angle up in here. Once again, we can use Pythagorean theorem to figure out the side we don't know. So if I got a one and a hypotenuse of two, that vertical leg is gonna be a root three. And from here, we can calculate sine, cosine, and tangent of 30 and 60. We get two for one out of this triangle. For 30, we take uh, opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of 30 is 1 half. Cosine of 30 is adjacent over hypotenuse. So square root of 3 over 2. And tangent of 30 is opposite over adjacent. And we could do the same thing what we did before. We have one divided by the square root of three. That's just, that's a perfectly valid way of finding one divided by square root of uh, finding the tangent of 30. But if we want to be more traditional, we will rationalize. And tangent of 30 will be root three over three. If we focus on the other angle, the 60 degree angle, we can write the tangent of 60 is adjacent over, uh, sorry, opposite over adjacent. So root three over one, which we'll just write as root three. Cosine of 60 is adjacent over hypotenuse or one half and sine of 60 is opposite over hypotenuse root three over two.
So some of the cool things that we've seen before happen. The 30 and 60 are in the same triangle. Those are complementary angles. And we notice that the sign, the co-functions of complementary angles are equal. Notice that cosine of 30 is the same as sine of 60. And sine of 30 is the same as cosine of 60. Co-functions of complementary angles are equal. You want to summarize that, we would say co functions of complementary angles are equal. What we want to be able to do is remember sine, cosine, and tangent of 30, 60, uh, 30, 45, and 60 degree angles. There's not a lot of numbers running around, there's one, one over two root two over two, root three over two. There's also a one, a root three, and a root three over three in various combinations. You want to look for a pattern that will work for you to help you remember these values. These values are your trigonometry times table. Just like before when you had to remember that seven times eight is 50 something. It's like you had to remember all that stuff. You have to remember these values. I have to be able to walk in on Thursday and say, what is the cosine of 60 degrees? And you say it is one half. And that's the amount of time that you get. Actually, it has to be faster because I talk slow at this point of the day. What is the cosine of 60? One half. It has to be that fast. You can't be like, oh, I can't be like, oh, cosine of 60. And you have to put this whole picture together. You just have to know it. If you don't, I kick you out of class. I'm just kidding. I kick you out of the school. I'm just kidding. That would be super extreme. How's everybody okay? It's just like your times tables. You don't have to sit down and memorize it. You just have to get, find, look for the patterns, see how things are related. If you remember one, like sine of 30 is a half, and then you remember how uh, what goes with the one half, it's also a root three over two. So there, at some, there's some way to combine these that you can remember all these numbers. Any questions? You have a ridiculous capacity for remembering shit. I used to use phone numbers for an example, but no one knows any phone numbers anymore. Does anybody know any phone numbers anymore? No, you just tell Siri, so like, hey Siri. No, no, sorry. Hey. Call so and so, right? Meanwhile, I still remember my girlfriend's phone number, my girlfriend from 40 years ago. I know that number because I called it all the fucking time. And we sat on the phone not talking to each other. It was just like, I was 12. So I can get all the way off my back about that one. Number 12. Any questions? Learn these values. What's that? No, uh, she got a cell phone now. So I just text her. <laughs> I still know her. So. All right. Any questions? Comments? Snide remarks? All right, that's it for today. I will see you all on Thursday. Everybody have a good couple of days. Oh, we didn't do an algebra thing today. You all look heartbroken that we didn't do an algebra thing today. That's it for today. I'll see you all on Thursday. Everybody have a good couple of days and thanks for playing. Oh, and return my cards if you have not already. Thanks for the pencil.